Guys, welcome to episode one. This is the Macro Golf podcast. Uh, I'm Joe, Macro Golf. You've got Sam with me here. And today's episode is the first episode. Uh, it's going to be us talking a little bit about ourselves, which is unusual. It feels a bit weird to talk about myself. <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about ourselves. We're going to talk a little bit about our, our background, what it is we do, the type of golfers that we help, the type of golfers we work for and work with, the type of work we do here at the Macro Golf Studio where we're filming this today. Um, just so that you guys can kind of get a little bit of introduction to who we are, what we do, uh, and then we'll start to kind of dig a little bit into golf fitness as a general topic. We'll talk a little bit about um, some of our beliefs in golf fitness, in the golfing performance world, um, and what it will probably do is spark some ideas for us on what we can do for some future podcasts. So that's the plan for today. Uh, that's what we're going to run through. That's what you can start to get a feel from um, this first episode, and. What I'm going to do to get us kick-started off is I'm just going to throw the most open question to Sam ever. Um, and I'm basically going to say, Sam Bennett, golf PT, SNC coach, what is it you do? What is it I do? What a question. What do well, you where do? do you begin? Where do you begin? So, Joe, typically I was a professional dancer growing up in my 20s, danced all around the world, did some amazing stuff transferred into that just to general personal training so just help general population losing weight gaining strength things like that wanted to become a bit more niche as myself I got absolutely like many of us addicted to the game of golf kind of delved into the world of personal training for golfers and typically in the UK there's just not a lot out there at all um dove in did my TPI qualification did some more qualification qualifications to be more golf specific and things and now it's just my aim just to help as many golfers as possible to enjoy this beautiful game and play the best golf that they can. It's a good game. It's a great game. It's a good game. <laughs> uh, you mentioned there with TPI, so a lot of people won't know what TPI is. They won't yes. know um, what it stands for. They won't know involvement. Some people will. So uh, talk through kind of what that is. Like when you say then you become a little bit more golf specific, what does that mean? Um, is there like a specific qualification you can go through to become more golf specific? Just so that people listening to this can kind of get a little bit more of an understanding of how we specialise down to golf fitness as a concept yeah. and how is that different to, you know, working with the general public that you said you were helping for? 100%, 100%. So the TPI is the Titleist Performance Institute, which I think they've done a fantastic job of bringing the kind of awareness of golf-specific training, performance, they do physio, things like that, and how that's going to help you kind of whittle down into the difference, like you said, between training general population and your golfers because I think there's a massive misconception amongst all of my clients that first come to see me they say right yes I work out I do xyz I do loads of pilates or I just do loads of stretching is that going to make my golf game better and the answer is no it's got to be individualized to you and your specialized needs for for your game um whether that's looking for more club head speed so do we need to work more on power stuff maybe not just getting your back squat or your deadlift as heavy as possible you need to look at your velocity and your your quickness of movements there or is it actually right you're suffering with a bit of thoracic rotation so how are we going to utilize that um we're not going to just get you a bit more flexible it's got to be within the skill golf the game of golf is a skill it's not just a movement so it has to be specific for that everything that we do in the gym here in the studio with our clients is always going to be related back to them um and that's what's been so interesting for me as a personal trainer um, coming into golfers. It's just so much more individualized. Typically working with just general population clients, you are just talking about, right, I want to lose weight, I want to gain weight. It's just the same thing, person to person to person. Every client that comes in here for golf is completely different depending on their, their past, their level of golf, their understanding of their movements, their biomechanics, maybe if they've had bad injuries or things or, or, or what they're looking for. Um, and that's what's just been absolutely fascinating for me to kind of deep dive into the study, the research that's slowly getting there. I think golf as a sport is, is lacked behind your, your football, rugby, baseball, all the sports that had so much money chucked at them to say, right, how can we make the best athletes as possible? And now I think we're starting to see that with golf. And that absolutely pleases me so much. I mean, the um, Full Swings just come out on Netflix and there's so much of them showing golfers with working with their PTs when traditionally we don't see it. Everyone sees footballers warm up on the pitch before, so everyone knows, oh, footballers warm up. 
you don't see golfers do it, but they're in the they're in the gym with their PTs probably an hour and a half before they even get out onto the range hitting any balls. Um, what about you, Joe? Let's get a deep dive into you and your background. That's a good question. I'll, just, I'll touch on that what you said with the TPI though, because I think from what you've said there and what I agree with you, the TPI or tightest performance institute for those of you that have you know, just heard it now from, from Sam um, has basically started to make this a little bit more known and a little bit more, I don't want to say a little bit more mainstream, but make it a little bit more readily available um, to professional golfers, number one, because before I think it was probably just the top of the top that yeah. were, that were understanding this stuff. So definitely lower down the professional game, the awareness has, has increased. Um, but also, which leads more to kind of what I do in even amateur game, um, there's some of this stuff starting to come in. There's some, you know, there's some, you know, golf coaches that are starting to understand this stuff. There's some coaches like you and I that use this stuff and apply it to professional amateurs. Um, and there's golfers out there working out this stuff on their own, picking yeah. stuff up, which is which is fantastic to see. So, um, yeah, that could, hopefully gives you guys a little bit of an insight into when we start talking. We probably to talk a lot about TPI down the road, um, and we're going to talk a lot about golf specific training. That kind of gives you a bit of background. Um, yeah, for me, um, I started by um, studying sport science and um, and exercise and personal training and this stuff at university. Uh, I went on to then do a master's at university in pain. So I got really interested in, in pain, um, how pain affects exercise, how pain affects um, our performance uh, and how pain is linked to fatigue and loads of stuff like that. I've done quite a lot of research and released some papers on, on pain and exercise. Um, and then kind of dropped that uh, level to the government stop managing gyms. So I basically yeah. managed gyms uh, for quite a few years, um, which opened me up to kind of the business side of things and, how businesses are run and how you know all this stuff goes together. It's not just the, the practical side of training people, but how you can actually build a business from that. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, similar to yourself, I was just addicted to golf. Like just for anyone that's just started playing this game, it is just the most addictive game ever. Um, so I was addicted to golf at the time, and I started to then use kind of my knowledge and my research from previous to help some of my friends who were playing. Um, a couple of my friends who were playing good level, but yeah. just you know had no understanding of any of this stuff that you were just mentioning. Um, so started to help a few of them, started yeah. to see some results in them and thinking, like, okay, this, this is pretty, There's pretty cool. There. Yeah. Exactly. You said no one was doing this, right? Yeah. No, one, no one was out there working on this stuff. Like, yeah. even if we go back probably four years ago, yeah. the amount of awareness was, was yeah. so little compared to now. So, um, yeah, I kind of put that, that research, put it, in, put it into practice, saw that it was working. Um, obviously, then had the business side from the job I was doing at the time mm. and pretty much just handed my notice in at work and created a company. Um, which was which was macro golf which was about <laughs> I think four years ago now three and a half four years ago so um, from there I've never looked back I've got completely sucked into helping amateur and professional golfers since you yeah. play, play their best golf uh, I'm I'm big on being able to play golf pain free uh, without pain restriction like I think everyone should deserve to be able to play golf and enjoy golf for Absolutely. many many years and that is pretty much what I spent all my time doing <laughs> which feels a bit weird like probably 16 hours a day yeah helping people <laughs> play golf play golf only if we could have the same amount of time playing golf ourselves right <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly that exactly that um, yeah which kind of leads us to you know the position of how we met um, like I had heard Sam's stories like Sam got in touch with me um, I heard Sam's story that you know you were, you were getting more into golf now and you were starting to really enjoy working with golfers and transferring all the knowledge and experience you had from working with the general population and applying that into yeah. golfers and learning the new concepts. Um, I was at a time in kind of my journey where I was looking at starting up a studio and I was kind of starting that process and I was looking to like build things in slightly different ways. Um, and I definitely had a lack of experience and uh, understanding of working more in like a one-to-one -one environment. Like yeah. a lot of my training before uh, with Macro was all online. Like the whole business was online, everything was online. Uh, and I hadn't probably worked with one-to-one -one clients for, for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we could, you know, I picked your brains on some stuff, you picked my brains on stuff, and we kind of, we, we clicked. And I think for a lot of people, when they probably think about how we met, we think we, we would have been better, right? Yeah. Like, we were yeah. both got Well, we discussions. said that the first time, didn't we? Yeah, the first like, time we met. Exactly, yeah. and I think yeah. people would have been a bit scared of... You know, teaming uh, up. Of teaming up yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. But I think we knew that we had similar ideas on things, like the stuff you mentioned there with TBI, I've got very, very similar, yeah. similar views on stuff. And... Uh, yeah, it's kind of led us to where we are now, which is, we are obviously we're recording this. For those of you that might watch this, uh, watch the video back, we are here in the studio um, at Hartsborn Country Club. 
uh, where we now help golfers in person. Uh, we help, well, I mean, I still work golfing online, Sam still works golfing online. Um, and that's kind of how we ended up. Long, well, it's kind of a long story short, yeah. but I know how long we've gone on for, but that's pretty much how we teamed up. How we got to this point. How we teamed up. I think we, we quickly kind of saw, like you said, my the past five years of my career has been all one-to-one. Yes, COVID threw that off a little bit working with clients online, but I quickly realized how how much I enjoy working with clients one-to-one, physically getting my hands on them, changing their shape, doing things like that. I just thought that was always been where I've kind of wanted to head down. But then picking your brains and building your online business has been, has been insane. And I think that's what we quickly kind of saw that, yes, we've got the same philosophies on a lot of stuff, but our specialities are very different. And I think we will kind of deep dive into that. Like, your pain stuff that you get into is is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like some of the stuff you mentioned there earlier in your, in your first speech, like I think some of the stuff you mentioned, we're all going to be able to dive deep, 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 deep massively yeah. as we move on through this podcast and create more episodes for you guys. And um, really kind of, what, what I'd like to get from this, from, from my point of view also, is to give people that are listening to this some really credible kind of information. Like we're both kind of science-driven um, in our approaches. Uh, and I think... In something as new as golf fitness and this stuff, it's there's a lot of stuff out there, and how much of this stuff is actually backed up? Yes. How much of it, how much of it can we take from other sports? How yes. much of it can we can we stretch the understanding? Um, and hopefully, this will be kind of serve as a as a point of call for people to get some really good kind of quality information. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I think we've both kind of seen that there's a lot of stuff out there that can be a bit gimmicky. And I think, unfortunately, with the golf game, even technically, like all these swing gadgets and stuff are just so gimmicky. None of it's research-based at all. Um, and we both pride ourselves on all our methodology being tried, tested, researched, back, which I think is, is so hugely important because we're playing with people's livelihoods. You know what I mean? Especially with our pro golfers and things, you can't just give them any old exercises and any, any old programs. It's got to be backed up. The research has to be shown why we are doing that. Um, yeah talk to me Joe a little bit about your kind of training philosophy then if I'm a new client coming to you say let's just say mid handicapper not too much of a history training where are you going to lead me down kind of what's what's your first port of call there it's a great question I think um, you know the, the little bit of background you gave there of a mid handicapper not sure like I think that like even just that little bit of information is very key like I think the approach that I would have if, you know, let's say, for example, I have a, a, a tour pro come to me yeah. or if I have a, I don't think, that, I don't necessarily think the golf uh, level is as important, but it's more like the position they're in in their yeah. life is very important. Yes. So you might have an amateur that comes in, might be a very regular golfer, but might, you know, have no structure in their life. Yeah. They might have no um, routines. They might have no, um, you know, history of being able to, you know, work on their health and well-being. Yeah. So yeah. depending on the person, but let's say we've got someone that comes in with zero structure, zero routine. Yeah. Um, from my experience and the way that I've worked with people in the past if you don't have any type of back structure routine habits and this stuff we can pretty much get you to try and do anything but it's probably not going to last and that's probably why they come to me in the first place so uh, when you say we're in the first place to start it probably wouldn't necessarily be saying okay let's let's do your mobility let's get you out of pain let's get you stronger let's yes. work on your clubbing speed all that stuff it's going to be let's look at your habits let's look at your routines and what can you do now to help get some structure in your life yes. to make all of this easier? Because yes. we're not going to lie and say that to get into this some of the stuff, you need to invest some time. There needs to be some element of time, whether that's 10 minutes a day or whether yeah. that's, you know, five hours a week, whatever it is, yeah. there needs to be some element of time and commitment yes. to a process to get healthier, fitter, play better golf, whatever it is. Um, and from my experience, what I've seen working with people, if you don't have that structure and you don't have habits and routines, it's very, very difficult and you're just going to rely on discipline to get you there. Yeah. So to answer that question, um, and I will throw a question back to you as well to get the answer, but to answer that question for myself, I think I always work with, you know, what are your current habits? What are your current routines? Okay. What can we do to get your life in a place 100%. that this stuff can start to slot in easier? Because yeah. if you're a tour player, you've got tons of practice, tons of travel, tons of other responsibilities to look after. If you're a amateur golfer, you might have family responsibilities, work commitments, yeah. all that stuff. And all of that is going to, unfortunately, take high priority yeah. in your health at this point. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be coming to see one of us, right? Okay. So, for me, to answer that question, we start with the habits. 100%. Oh, I think that's absolutely fascinating. Um, I did a course, where was it, back in 2019, behavioural change specialist. 
and I'd never really delved into the kind of psychology before for my clients and things like that. Doing that and the psychology behind how we create habits and how we actually create change. If you can't master that, you can be the best PT in the world. You can be the best physio, the best golf coach in the world. You can't master people changing their habits. Nothing's going to happen. You can have the best workout plan, the access to the best gym, access to the best nutrition. If you don't have those stone habits set out, whatever they may be, whether that's 10,000 steps a day, whether that's getting seven, eight hours sleep a night, nothing, no, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's having those key things in place. I think that'd be a really cool podcast in the future, actually, of like how to make a change. Like, yes. the amount of people who do come to me with that question of like, you know, I'm, I'm literally doing nothing. Yeah. Where do I start? Yeah. Um, and we need to find out why you're doing nothing first, because there'll be a reason why you're doing nothing, yeah. whether it's because you don't have the time or you don't have the structure or the routine or the discipline or yeah. the motivation, whatever. Uh, so it, it generally starts there. Like, I think from anyone who's worked with me online will, will kind of remember the process that I go through with people as a, not really like a goal setting process, but more of like an understanding of where they are. So, you know, mm-hmm. what's actually important to you, uh, what type of routines do you currently have and understanding where people are. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's fundamental. I mean, as you said that with the, with the, uh, with the plans and that stuff, like if you wrote the best training plan in the world, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Really. Sorry. Sorry. The research has shown the best training plan is the one you can adhere to, the one you can stick to for, this isn't 12 weeks, 16 weeks. We're talking year, month long program. Right. And I think like for what we're going to talk about in future episodes, I think we'll talk a lot about this because yeah. although we are very science backed in probably in some of the program that we do and kind of the, the, the methodology that we use to, you know, specifically for weight loss, like we've had great yes. conversations on weight loss previously yeah. and nutrition. We're very, very science backed with those type of things, but you can't just be you can't a science be a scientist and yeah. get someone to make a change. Yes. So you have to yes. understand that the science is always going to be led by the behavior. 100%. Um, and I think that'd be quite a cool Def- um, definitely. one for the future. Actually. Definitely. Definitely. I'm glad that's uh, so I want to know a little bit more about um, like your journey and where you see your journey moving forward because obviously we're hoping to record a lot of these episodes. We're hoping to you know do this for, for a long time now. And I think for the listeners as they kind of pick this up, yeah. they'll obviously see both of us and the business go on, on, yeah. on a journey. I think, yeah. like, I think it's going to be quite a cool time for us to, to go. So where do you see yourself moving forward in the next kind of like five years as a coach in golf? Is your aspiration to start working with more tour players? Is your aspiration to start working um, more in you know different settings with different players? Like where where do you want to kind of take your journey as a golf fitness specialist? It's, a, it's an interesting question, and it's one I'm still trying to kind of figure out myself. I'm working with a couple of pros at the moment, some young guys that maybe are aspiring to get onto certain types of tours. Whether I want that to be kind of my my bread and butter, just working with those, I'm not sure. I think my biggest satisfaction, I had a client come to me last week, he's been training here with us for just before Christmas, so we're what, three, two and a bit months in, won his first medal, handicap dropped two points, playing pain-free, the most, more golf than he's ever played. Getting a message like that and him coming in and telling me that, is, I don't think it gets more satisfying than that. I've, I've had it before with clients who are, yes, all right, so we're just looking to lose some weight, right, we step on the scales, right, we've hit their goals. It doesn't mean as much as a as a golfer coming in being like right I've just, my handicaps dropped or actually Sam I played three rounds over the weekend and I can still go to work and I can still play with my kids on Monday do you know what I mean like that is so much more rewarding for me but working with these guys who are looking to kind of be a bit more competitive and take it slightly more seriously and when you're really getting into the kind of nitty gritty of it so creating force curve velocity like uh, force velocity curves really deep deep diving into the stats on them i think is is absolutely fascinating as well so I, to be honest i couldn't tell you right now it's like something i'm still trying to work out but i think that's quite nice right like you, this is what's quite fun being a coach is you never really know what direction you're gonna yeah. get dragged into yeah like you when you first qualified as a coach, you didn't think you'd probably be working in golf. Oh, if you, are, if you asked me if you asked me two years ago what, what I would be doing right now, I, I would not have said I'm working with golf. No, not exactly. Myself. So it's quite nice to have this um, open mindset of you know you don't really know where you want to yeah. you know, where you want to focus your, your, yeah. your mindset down, um, which I think is quite nice. I think it's quite, it's, it's, it, it kind of opens you up. I think this is something you from a lot of the PGA coaches that I spoke to, a lot of golf coaches I spoke to, they kind of feel like they get bogged down quite quickly yeah. um, and that's that's quite hard and I think actually what's quite nice about what we do is you know it's, it's still so new that there's still so yeah. many avenues to jump yeah. into like I think you, 
like at the moment we don't have specialists in, like in the same way that you have golf you might have like a, pe- a putting specialist yes. or, uh, or you know wedge game specialist or whatever yeah. it is yeah. we don't even have that in our area because right? there's still so few of us that we can't be yeah. like you like yeah. I maybe would say that I niche down a little bit more into like mobility or pain side yes and you know I'd say I probably if, if I was to deep dive into that I'd probably say I do gravitate a bit more towards the club head speed maybe the distance side of things but then truly by working on that you're still working on the pain free stuff as well don't properly anyway doing it properly don't go get me wrong you can whack out some crazy training blocks and get that club head speed up (laughs) whether you'll be able to do that for the rest of your life is a different question (laughs) and we've kind of had that uh, we've had that uh, talk before off camera just about longevity and things like that and i think that's another fascinating subject that i'd love to do a, a real deep dive on i think one of both of our philosophies is kind of creating change that can last not 16 weeks not this golf season but whether you can still play on 20 years 30 years down the line um not not screwing yourself up not injuring yourself because of that training i still think that everyone should have the aspiration to shoot their age yeah and I love some, that. some of the people listening to this are going to say, yeah, what? Like, it's going to take a little bit to work it out. But if you think of shooting your age, right? Let's say a past 72 course, to shoot 72 at the age of 72. Oh, 100%. Um, like, that is the, the true, yeah. in my eyes, the true sign of longevity yeah. in the game. Yeah. Um, and not many people have done it. Apart from my granddad. My granddad did that recently. Really? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I think he shot 84 at 84 years old. That's, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's, long, cool. That's, the, that's the definition of longevity. Exactly. Just be able to do it. Like, we all absolutely love this game. And I think if you asked any golfer, you still want to be able to play it right up into your 70s, 80s? The answer is yes. And this is what's different with our game compared to other, like football, you don't get the same. No. Rugby, you definitely don't, don't no. get the same, right? We, we actually have the opportunity to play this game yeah. for a lifetime. Yeah. Um, and I think if you do the right things and speak to the right people and look after yourself in the right way, there's no reason why you can't play for yeah. years and years and years. 100%. This game. 100%. I know we went off your history, uh, your future there, but we went into the future of golf. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know, for, for me, I think, in that to answer that question myself, I think um, probably similar to you, I don't really know in terms of my one to one, you know, in terms of my coaching. Yeah. I don't really know where that's going to take me. Like, yeah. I enjoy working with pros um, and seeing them, you know, there's something different about working with very, very talented people, right? Yes. Like, it's yes. something. And as a coach, I think you should always have the aspiration to work with the best in the world at whatever discipline that yeah. is, right? Like, um, I used to work with bodybuilders and that was, you know, a completely different goal. For, yeah. But there was something, you know, special about working with these guys that has freakishly big amounts of muscle. Yes. Like, freakishly yeah. strong. Like, freakishly low body fat. Like, to work with the most extreme yes. people. Is that have thing. that extreme discipline to their art. Yeah, and that I think you be. learn a lot by working oh, with the best. Oh, one hundred percent. And some of the, you know, some of the pros that have come in here, and I've tested them and seen how they move and see, you know, how they swing the golf club and seeing their speed and that type of stuff. Like, I obviously you learn from how they yes. move and apply yes. that to oh, absolutely the rest of the people. So I think there is definitely something that interests me to work with with the best. Um, but I would definitely say I'm the same as you. I get the most satisfaction from working on that level of you know I've been able to play golf this week and I haven't been able to play for six months. Yeah. You know. I've helped a guy coming back from a shoulder surgery that were affected, like, and he, he just wanted to play golf again. Yeah. So that first round that he yeah. played was like yeah. significant. Yeah. You know, we, we so it's seeing him from not being able to lift his arm above his waist to then being able to take his arm above his head to then hold the golf club and chip and putt and then go and play yes. around. Like, that's something that you, you know, is fantastic. And I'm sure for, you know, if there was a pro golfer that had the same problem, you got them back and they've gone back and won, maybe there'll be some level of satisfaction yes. there as yeah. well. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there's something about helping people at that level yeah. achieve something. Yeah, so I, I think kind of for both of us, I know we've kind of avoided the questions we've asked each other, but yeah. the goal is to, to kind of help as many people as we can in whatever new avenue that might be, whether that is your professional golfers, your PGA coaches, or your amateurs. Yeah. It's, it's to try and spread this message to help as, as many of you guys as possible. 100%, 100%. And um, then I think in terms of the business, but I do try and separate it too, because I think the business is separate too. The, the coaching yeah. that I do um, I think we've had a really good experience of having the studio here um, here at Hartsbourne I think this concept worked really well of working with people that wouldn't necessarily have access to online coaching or access to you know all the content that you might find on you know on YouTube or yeah. online or social media yeah. or whatever um, so actually it's almost like going in fresh again with yeah. people with like understanding they can actually work 
on their body that's going to help their golf like that's a completely like yeah. although we see it as normal now for these people it's yeah. completely oh, normal 100%. so it's again like a new to have a to have a private safe space for a lot of the guys that have come in here I think is a massive one yeah. you're not in a public gym we're, we're lucky to have this amazing studio where we can actually swing clubs we can do all this stuff and there's no one judging yeah. you've, you've not got Sally standing in the squat right looking at you thinking what the hell are you doing and some so of our movements are quite different yeah. some of our philosophies are different and it's fantastic that we do have this space to, to be able to do that Yeah. so for me I think man, like next five years I'd, I'd want to have more of these spaces Yeah. I want to expand this out and help people like you know more people in in this way as well yeah um i know that then for my coaching this isn't my area of expertise like working one-to-one with people in that way is not like i would i always i've always said for years and years there's better coaches than me that do that and that's why i'm glad that we we found each other because you are better than me at this um but i think the idea is that we can then you know use to expand yes. I think a, a key for yeah key for a lot of the stuff that we want to get across in the message Ross. yeah Pretty absolutely cool. um so my other question for you um was actually on your kind of philosophy of of golf fitness in general what mm. you believe um that, you know what is golf fitness to you yeah. and how does that um apply across all the different populations we work for mm-hmm. uh, and what do you kind of do you have like a hierarchy of what you deem the most important when you talk about golf fitness what is it you see as golf fitness and what is that for you in your terms it's, it's kind of a, that's an interesting question I, I think philosophy I, I'd say it's based on maybe five or five or six things I'd say first it's it's the that individual that's saying right I want to treat everyone that comes in here or any client that I work with online as a complete different case study like you said they've all got completely different lives completely different priorities completely different time opportunities or financial things so how can we kind of address that one person specifically and then i'd say a big one for me is more of a holistic approach not looking at just as golf fitness it's about it's a it's not just about kind of building muscle or improving flexibility or swinging faster it's it's having a kind of comprehensive approach on 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 all of that and kind of the the nutrition that comes with it the the mental focus on the side of the golf game that i think a lot of a lot of pts don't touch upon at all because i mean that we've all we've all played rounds and just mentally it's just completely escaped us there are methods there are training things of doing that and i know that's not quite as such a a personal trainer snc thing to talk about but it's something i know it's something you specialize in massively training focus is huge like if you can train someone to focus in a gym and use the concepts of, you know, even the concepts of breath works, the, yeah. concept, the concept of like all that stuff, like that's a skill that you can transfer everywhere. You can transfer yeah. that to the work, you can transfer that to the golf course, you can yeah. transfer it into your practice. Yeah. Um, you know, reps for the sake of reps yes. in the gym yeah. is, means the same on the driving range as well. Like yeah. that concept is the same. So yeah. I'm making making each thing. rep as, as perfect as it can be and having that pure mental focus. And being as present as perfect. Yes, as Pre- the present stuff is, is absolutely absolutely key there um i think it's also t- trying to take a, a, a long-term view um is is one that i try and really dig into my clients that it's not just a short-term process that this work and i say to my clients i don't want you working with me forever i want to transfer my knowledge onto you and we can keep in touch we can check in and things but it's me teaching you so you can go away spread your wings and actually really really enjoy this for the rest of your life i think that's a, that's a massive one trying to under, trying to get people to understand that this isn't a 12 week program that this is a hopefully if you enjoy it this is the rest of your life yeah. and trying to create these habits that don't feel like hard work yes discipline is so important and you're always going to have those kind of those workouts those practice sessions on the range those putting drills that you don't want to do that day and it's having the discipline to do that, but it's just really understanding that this is a it's a long term long term process. Um, and then I just say, my kind of one of my key philosophies is just about enjoyment. It's just about enjoying it. It's about enjoying how well your body can move pain free, how much movement you can create, and kind of. I think this ties back into my background as a dancer. I've seen what the body is capable of. The golf swing, yes, is really hard, but the body is capable of a lot more crazy things than that. Um, the human body is amazing, and it's trying to get people to enjoy 
moving, letting off steam, however that kind of manifests in them. I say that is a massive part of my philosophy, just getting them to enjoy it, enjoy the training, so then they can go out and enjoy the game as much as possible. Nice. I think for me, if you if you just you know, put golf fitness into a capture in that way, I think, and this is what I try and get across to people when they when they say you know, people that don't necessarily play that much golf when they ask me like what do I do, I always just say to people not having your body hold you back from doing anything like yeah whether that's spinning the golf club 120 mile an hour, whether that's being able to practice you know four yeah. or five times a week yeah whether that's one of playing three rounds of golf in in three days yeah. Whether that's uh, you know even just being able to walk nine holes, which you know for for here for example, oh, it's, it's, we've it's, had people at the club here since they've taken um, trolleys away. Yeah, they can't, can't play. They can't play. Yeah, right. Like so, even if you say I want to be able to play and walk nine holes, yeah, that's golf fitness in a capsule, right? What yeah. what do you want to be able to do, yeah. and is your body holding you back from being able to do that, right? And that might be you know I want to get into this position in my golf, right? Great. That might be I want to be able to you know play eighteen holes three times a week and not have pain in my knee. Yeah, great. It means you know I want to enter long drive and I want to spin the golf club one hundred mile an hour. Great. Like if your body's holding you back from doing something you want to do, I would put that in the capsule. You know what people like us can help you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Help you achieve. So I think yeah. that again kind of covers everything in terms of the individual as well because everyone has individual things of what they want to do. Everyone has individual things holding them back. Yeah. Let's say that person wants to spin the golf club faster. Might be their mobility, might be their strength, might be their power, it might be their technique, it might be all of these things. Like, there's yeah. so many elements of all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, same with pain, same with you know being able to go golf. So, I think if you if you're ever thinking that your body's holding you back from being able to perform in the way that you want to perform or yeah. do an action you want to do, um, I think there's a golf in there. Somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, I completely agree. I like that. You know, and I think where that probably runs where it runs its course is you know is your body holding you back from performing how you want to perform no it's probably not my body in that case it's probably technique or it's yes. performance or it's mental or it's whatever like I would probably then put that in another category um, but I think all of these things cross over in so many different aspects that just, you know if you just think is my body holding me back from doing something yeah that's probably yeah. so um, yeah that's I don't know why. no I like that I like that a lot so moving on from like today's uh, podcast we're going to cover so many other topics and so many other um, disciplines. Uh, what I'd say to anyone that's listening to this episode here, you can obviously get in touch with us and request anything you want to be yeah, discussed. Absolutely. So uh, we have got you know, topics that we want to cover um, that we feel are going to be important to cover. I feel like it's also quite important to cover the basics. Like I feel like maybe we sometimes jump ahead. Like we've spoke, you, you spoke about like false personalists. Like, like <laughs> yes. we might feel we yes. might have to just regress a little bit, right? 100%. We might need to start. Maybe first of all, we talk about strength training, yes. right? Maybe we'll start there. Maybe we'll talk about mobility. Maybe we'll talk about pain. Maybe we'll talk about club head speed. Maybe we'll talk about all this kind of like foundational stuff, yes. and then from there we can dig a little bit deeper. Um, but if there's any specific topic that anyone listening wants covered, um, you can obviously just get in touch with us, um, and we'll give you all of our social media. Um, Kind of details. Um, in fact, I'll give you mine now. You can contact me at, at Joe Macro Golf on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. And uh, Sam, I'm at uh, Sam Bennett Golf PT on Instagram, Twitter. Perfect. So, any topics you want covered, uh, or if you want to just you know throw some abuse at Sam, like just that's where you head. Absolutely. Sam Bennett Golf PT. Throw your abuse there. <laughs> Inbox is open. Can't wait. Exactly. Um, so any topics you want covered let us know anything you uh, any feedback or reviews obviously this is our first time doing this yep. we are complete newbies to, to this concept um, please do let us know uh, and give us feedback because we want to make this as informative as possible yeah. uh, and as valuable for everyone as possible as well awesome thank you guys thank you very much guys see you next time <laughs>